Give us a little bit of insight on your draft experience. Draft night was stressful, man. It was stressful because I had no clue where I was going. And you saw the, you know, the other quarterbacks didn't go. And, you had you know, a clue. Like, Don't do that. You had a clue. Yeah. I swear you had a clue. I, would, I would tell you. Well, when I was falling, I, I hit 20. I'm like. If, if it's not this one, then I really don't know because I thought it was either going to be the Saints or <laughs> you know, Pittsburgh. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Not Just Football with Cam Hayward. I, of course, am your host, Cam Hayward. And with me, as always, my longtime friend and producer, Hayden Walsh. But today we have a special, special guest for Steelers Nation. He is our rookie quarterback. He's not a rookie anymore, but I'm still going to treat Michael rookie for a little bit longer. Steelers quarterback, Kenny Pickett. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, guys? I'm great. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you for coming on. So we're going to jump right in. How do you feel about the season? I feel good about it. Wish we, you know, we were playing this weekend, obviously. Um, but, you know, a lot of positives right. to, 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 you know, kind of build off of some negatives I can learn from. So I think, you know, if we use it the right way. It'll be good, you know, heading into next year. Mm. So give me some of those positives and negatives. Like what what is what are you taking from the season when you say, you know, there's some things you got to work on? Yeah, I mean, I would say the, the positive, I think the ownership of the offense and how, you know, early on I was kind of playing catch up, not having the reps from from camp and, and going into that Jets game. And I was just worried about executing a single play. You know, I was getting the play. I, I was like, mm -hmm. OK, I got to do X, Y, Z. And that's all I was kind of focused on was calling it, executing it. And as the, the season went on, I was kind of seeing things and with coverages that was giving us chances to take more shots down the field or, you know, extending plays and keep my eyes down the field and hitting some big time plays, um, kind of understanding, you know, how Coach Tomlin would kind of lay out how we're going to win a game, you know, in that first team meeting. And it's kind of crazy. He would call out exactly how the game's mm -hmm. going to go every single time. So, I mean, I would just take it to heart exactly what he says. Like, all right, this is this is how he sees it. And I would try to execute, you know, to the best of my ability of what he had, it, how, how he had it laid out. Um, you know, negatives were, you know, I was turning the ball over way too much early on. Um, I think I did a good job of improving that in the back half of the season. Um, you know, so that's something I want to continue to build on. And then the rapport with the receivers, like I didn't have much with Deontay. I didn't get a lot of reps with him. I didn't have much with Pat. I had with jo with George and Connor, and I think everyone kind of saw that. Th those guys I was kind of clicking with real early on because of how much work we got together. Uh, but that's something that we need to continue to build on um, going into year two, just timing with the receivers, uh, putting guys in the right spots to, for us to succeed down the field, um, and just continuing to grow together as a team. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that you brought that up. And, you know, I, I feel like you're going to continue to keep growing with your receivers. Um you know, I think it, it, it's a lot for a rookie quarterback. You know, you got to learn everybody's name. You got to cater to everybody. Uh, and you got to learn the the offense. But I thought you did a hell of a job doing that. Um, and I think it's just going to benefit you down the road. You know, there's a lot more football to be played for you. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be on the ride. Uh, one thing I want to ask, in these, in these last couple games you played, we saw – um, some big time throws, um, some game winning throws. What is going through your head uh, in those? You know, I think you had four game winning touchdowns. What's going through your head on those drives? Um, just find a way to win, man. There's, that's it. I don't care how the hell I got, it has to get done. It's like you just kind of, and you, you saw it early on. I was struggling the two minute drill, um, you know, against you guys all the time. I was always trying to hunt that big play instead of letting the big play kind of come to mm -hmm. me as, as the drive would go. So I was – and I would talk to Coach Flores. Like, Coach Flo was huge because he kind of really helped me with the two-minute drill along with Coach Soli and Coach Canada. Mm -hmm. um, we just kind of had – I would talk to him after every single one. And he's like, you know, you're going to need that one chunk play. And after you get that chunk play, you should be good to just take what they give you down into the red zone. And then you got to make that big-time throw to, to make – you know, to score. Mm. Um, so after I was, after I talked with, you know, coach and I was having, I was just failing, you know, week after week, I was getting so pissed off, man, on those, those uh, Friday practices against you guys. Everyone was happy. We get into the weekend. I'd be <laughs> walking into the building because we didn't, we didn't win. Um, but I think having all those, you know, Kevin, you know, thank coach D for putting us in those two minutes every week. I'm sure not a lot of guys liked it, but I loved it because I needed it and it helped me, you know, as the, as the season went on. But, you know, letting that chunk play, you know, getting that one big chunk play, that explosive, 
and then kind of taking what the defense gives us mm-hmm. and then working on our red zone offense, um, you know, that kind of mindset clicked with me. And then I, it, you know, kind of stuck with me as the season went. Wow. You brought up coach Flores. I didn't know Flo was giving you advice, you know, Flo, Flo's yeah. behind the scenes, you know, trying to be a puppeteer. <laughs> yeah. Man. It was, and then he texted me. There was one night Brady had a great two minute drill earlier in the year, and he texted me. He's like, "Do you see that?" I was like, "Yeah, I watched the whole thing." So he he was, you know, mm-hmm. I would talk to him just on the side a little bit. Um, you know how great of a coach he is, but um, you know he would just give me little pointers here and there, like because the, the game's just different than college. Like you don't get the stoppage of clock after first down, and you know coming into the league is your first time. Like you don't realize how much time you have in the two minute uh, at the college level versus the pro level because of how much you gain on the stoppage oh, yeah. clock at the first down. So I didn't, you know, in the college level, I would just kind of dink my way down the field and I knew I had so much time as long as I was just getting first downs and moving the chains. In the college level, I'd be taking, or the pro level in practice, I was taking the short stuff, taking the short stuff, and then I would make it real hard on myself to get in the end zone because I wasn't chasing that chunk play um, and getting that one big play to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, change the field. Um so it was kind of like I was just kind of, fi- fi- you know, figuring that out and, and finding my way through it. Um, but Coach Flo was a huge help in that. You know, it's, it's funny you bring up those two-minute drills. It wasn't Mike T that was wanting the drill. It was Mink. Minka always wanted the drill. And everyone was like, Minka, bro, like, relax. Like, we're trying to get out of here. We're trying to stay healthy. Like, Minka right. was always asking for the drill. And so at the end of the season, we're like, all right, Mink, like, you got what you wanted, but we're going to chill out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, towards the end, I definitely I, I was on the same page. You guys see how beat up everybody is going into a 17-week season versus a 12-week season in college. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think there's no coincidence why Mick, you know, makes the game ceiling picks all the time either. You know, that guy, is, he's, he's right where yeah. we need to be. Every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes a, makes a character for that. But he, he makes us right at the end with those game-winning picks. Uh, I want to bring up, you know, you talked a little bit about your wide receiver room and your your offensive guys. I'm going to go down and list of some guys. I just want you to describe them um, in your relationship with them. Um, Deontay, Deontay Johnson. Yeah, so my, my relationship grew with Deontay. Um, he kind of – he was talking to me a lot early on, um, just kind of saying how the game's going to slow down for me and how his rookie year went and how, like, the transition is from college to pro – um, always talking to me about what he sees and he's asking me what I see, like where, he, where is he in the progression? Like he's a really smart player and he knows how much time he has in certain concepts to get open. Um, he has the best like stop go ability. I think I've ever seen, um, you know, the way he can mm. just put the brakes on at full speed and get in and out of cuts. Um, no matter what DB that we've ever gone against this season, there's some guys you're like, all right, you know, if, if all things even you stay away from him, but if I know it's Deontay with his best route, or anything with him stopping and going and changing direction, I'm going to throw it to Deontay if he's one on one, just because mm-hmm. of how talented, you know, how talented he is. So our relationship continued to grow, you know, and, I, and I'm I'm excited to to see how it goes in, into year two now that you know we've had a lot of you know time together, um, and he knows that you know he's going to get a lot of looks, you know, coming from me. Mm. George Pickens. George is my guy, man. We came in together. Um, you know, we had a lot of time throwing early on. So I think that's why, you know, that connection was there really early on and it, and it lasted throughout the season. Um, but, you know, one of the probably the most athletic player I've ever had a chance to play with. You've seen it. I mean, he does some things in practice that are so casual um, that for him, they're casual, like an everyday play. But, you know, you're looking around like that was the best catch I've ever seen. And it was, in, you know, in practice. And then he had the one versus the Browns and. It just seems like if you put it in his zip code, you know, he's going to come down with it. So I, I, he's a guy, if it's, it's never 50 50 with George, it's always leaning. I'm always leaning that George is going to make the play. And if he doesn't make it, you're like, oh, wow, that must have been a really good play by the defense because it just doesn't happen often. Like, I've just seen it too much in practice and in games that he's just going to make those plays. So those 50 50 balls are probably 70 30, George, you know, maybe a little bit more. So he's a guy that I know mm-hmm. will go make plays. Najee, Najee Harris. Yeah, Najee, man. He, he's a. He's, a, he's another guy, man, like he plays so hard and like, to see what he kind of goes through on a weekly basis, like and as the season goes, you know, running backs, especially the style of running that he does um, to get himself healthy every single week, the kind of grueling, you know, the grueling season that he goes through um, because people only see when he runs the ball, but I see the pass pro. Like I see when I'm back there and we're talking about, you know, pass pro and I watch the tape and I see him, 
going up there and blocking Roquan Smith or, you know, these guys that are coming 100 mile an hour through the hole. Um, just the constant wear and tear that he goes through. I have so much respect for him and how he, you know, prepares every single week and how hard he plays. And he's another guy, I think, that, you know, we were kind of getting our feet under us in that early part of the season, you know, with the O-line, the receivers, the quarterback, getting off, get, you know, getting that figured out, that he continued to improve. And you finally saw him, you know, get into his self and how talented he is. And he's just letting his natural abilities take over, you know, once we all got on the same page, you know, right around that bye week area. Um, so, you know, he's a guy that's a staple of our team. Uh, you know, 22 is going to be doing it for a long time in the block and goal. So I'm, I'm, you know, excited to be, you know, his quarterback, hopefully, you know, moving forward for a long time and, and play with him and, um, you know, go win some more games. Yeah, Najee, he takes a lot of beatings, but, man, he just keeps coming back for more. Um, yeah. You know, I want to talk about uh, an unsung hero again, uh, but very underrated, I think. Uh, he's our short yardage specialist, uh, Derek Watt. Give me something on Derek. Yeah, D Watt. Um, he he kind of did that gritty. He he. We were practicing that play for so long. Every time, every time he would score and like walk through or something, he would do that little gritty that was just so bad. But it was so funny after a while. So when he didn't do it, I kind of like threw my hands up, and he did it like a little bit right before he got to me when we were celebrating. Um, but he's just another guy, like like you said, kind of unsung hero guy that. You know, short yardage specialist, as Coach T would say, like when we need that yard or two um, in those crucial moments, you know, we do a good job of kind of designing plays to get, you know, D-Watt the ball inside and let him just kind of, you know, use his natural abilities of finding holes and and uh, getting what we need. Um, you know, I, I think he only mm. – he's gotten every single every single one except one, I think, throughout the season that I can remember that he got. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so he, he's a guy that, you know, when the play comes in and you know he's coming in, you know, you're just expecting to get a first down and, and move on with the drive. Um, you know, another big time special special teams player that, you know, if he's not talking offense on the sidelines or, you know, in practice, I always hear him talking to the guys on special teams about what they need to do and how, you know, how serious they take their jobs. And, you know, at the pro level, at least, from, you know, pro versus college, you know, you, you see a lot more games, uh, you know, lost, I'd say, on special teams. Like there's those big plays that, you know, cost teams games. Um and, you know, our guys are so dialed in, you know, with, with uh, you know, Danny Smith, um, you know, he gets those guys right. And, you know, it's, it's cool to see, you know, that side of the ball. And I kind of pay it. I like to pay attention to it because it's so important, you know, for both sides. But, you know, those guys do, you know, a great job. Yeah. Yeah. D. Watt is, you know, not just a good fullback, but a good special teamer. Um, and the last special teamer I'll bring up, uh, Meatball. How do you feel about Meatball? Meatball. Meatball's my guy, man. We've been, you know, he's, uh, <laughs> we, we hang out, we hang out, you know, whenever we have time to, um, I saw him in the facility yesterday, actually, he was there. I was like, I was pretty surprised to see him in there. Um, uh, but it was, it was good to see him. Um, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that his role continued to grow, to grow for us as the season went on. I think it's kind of just the, the tip of the iceberg, I think, in terms of what he's going to be able to do, um, He's, he's a receiver, he's a tight end, and I think he can be, you know, an extra an extra back for us. I think if we can get him in the backfield, um, we can do some different things with him and Najee back there. Um, that just, you know, it makes it just tough for a defense, and he could catch the ball out of the backfield. You get him involved in the pass game that way. I think he can pass protect if we need him to. You know, as a running back, I think he has the, he has the understanding of pass pro. And so he's just, he's a guy that the more you can do, I think, you know, the better. And Connor can just, he's just a football player. I think that's when anyone asks me about Connor. That's all I say. I'm like, he's a player, man. He can do he can do whatever you need him to do. Um, so you know, he's you know a great friend of mine, and you know I'm excited to you know play with him for a long time, um, you know, and win some games with, with the brothers on the team. <laughs> yeah, that's Connor, by the way, right, Cam? Meatball is Connor for the people who don't know who yes. Meatball is. Meat, meatballs from cocktail, you name it. That is Connor Hayward if he has a nickname. <laughs> Um, all right, Kenny, Cam asked you about current teammates. I want to ask about a former teammate. Jordan Addison declared for the draft. How cool would it be to have a reunion in Pittsburgh with him? That'd be awesome, man. That'd be awesome. We, we talked about playing the NFL together, you know, while we were at Pitt. Um, that's like the college teammates dream, you know, to, to play, especially like a quarterback receiver, uh, you know, that kind of dynamic, especially how well we played together. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of him and what he, what he's done in his college career. Um, you know, I, I hope he's probably going to run low four threes, maybe high four two nine, like four two nine, four two eight. If he if he's got a good start, he's got that kind of speed. 
Um, mm. I think he'll surprise. I think people are kind of underestimating his speed. And the thing about Jordan is that he runs routes at that speed. There's some guys that run four three, but they don't play at that at that speed. That's what is impressive about him is that he plays at that know. speed. He's in and out of cuts at that speed. Um, so he's an elite elite receiver. So whoever gets him is going to get a, a special talent. And I think the, the most impressive thing about him is off the field is you know his attitude, how he attacks you know work every single day, how he was so eager to get in the film room with me, and he never missed a throwing session since he was a freshman at Pitt. You know, for two years straight, he was always there. Mm. And when your number one receiver is that guy, you know, doing the right things, everybody else follows. You know, so it's it was easy to get the room right when Jordan was in there. He kind of showed everybody, you know, by being extremely quiet too. It, it took him about a year to open up to me. I, I, after one year of being together, he finally <laughs> would talk to me, you know, more. He he's just kind of a quiet kid that you know loves to play. You know, is, is tight with his teammates, and you know, I'm I'm really excited for Jordan, you know, in his future. Hmm. Yeah, I want to, uh, you know, you bring up the draft and we talk about Jordan. Um, give us a little bit of insight on your draft experience. How was draft night? Draft night was stressful, man. It was stressful because I had no clue where I was going. And you saw the, you know, the other quarterbacks didn't go. You, you had, had a clue. Them. Don't do that. You had a clue. Yeah. I swear you had a clue. I, would, I would tell you, well, when I was falling and I, I hit 20, I'm like, if, if it's not this one, then I really don't know because I thought it was either going to be the Saints or <laughs> you know, Pittsburgh. And if it wasn't Pittsburgh, there was a lot of teams that said they were going to trade back to, to get me. And that 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 list was pretty, you know, you know, there was a pretty long list of teams that told me that, listen, if you're in like that back half of one, we're going to come get you. So after 20, it would have got pretty hectic, I think. Um, but as I kept falling, I think it was the Saints at 19. And uh, my phone rang, and everyone in everyone that was at my draft party thought it was the Saints. So, I, like Coach T called Dews, and he was like, "Man, how cool is that? You know, like we got Kenny." And Dews is like, "You're one pick too late, man. Like the Saints are on the phone with them right now." And literally, you know, I was on the phone with like Omar, and I, with yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it was it was so funny, man. <laughs> Dews, Dews thought I was out of here. Um, so it, it was crazy though, man. Genuinely didn't have an idea of where I was gonna go. Um, had like the four or five teams, but you know, one didn't kind of show me their hand more than the other. You know how that goes with teams, and um, you know, not wanting to give up information. That's like you know, Coach T. I didn't, I didn't, I met with them for five minutes at the Senior Bowl. Maybe you know, they had me in for for a visit. You know, I walked right next door while I was training and kind of talked to them for a little bit. But it, it didn't seem like much. There's a you know, other teams that had that showed a lot more interest, you know, in me than the Steelers, just because I mean they've seen me for five years. Um, so I think they had a pretty good idea of kind of who I was, what I was about. It was all the other teams that needed to get to know me. Uh, but yeah, you know, draft night was, was was stressful. But when you get that call, you know, there's no better feeling. I just broke down. It was, you know, your your dream, your yeah. your life, everything you everything you've ever dreamed about since you picked up a football. All those workouts, all those training sessions. Like I just thought all all like the hard work. Um, so it's it was it was special. Mm. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. Uh... Why did they bring you on a visit when you had already seen everything about the Pittsburgh Steelers? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. And I remember I would I sat down with all of them, and they're just kind of like, "Yeah, like we're just doing this as like a formality. Like we don't even know why we have you over." Here. Like, it was just kind of like, it was the most casual visit that I had for sure. I, it was it was nice. It was kind of just hanging out and talking ball, and uh, way more laid back than some of the other ones I had. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think it was just kind of a formality of having all the quarterbacks in that they were looking at. With Caesar Sportsbook and Casino, every bet earns with Caesar Rewards. That means whether you win or lose, you're always earning towards perks like free stays at iconic Caesar properties, game tickets, dining, and more. And if you haven't started yet, here's a reminder. Your first bet is on Caesars. Up to $1,250, download the app with promo code OmahaFull and place your first bet. If you win, congrats. If you don't, you'll get it all back as a free bet. 21 plus only offer valid must be physically present in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming only. 
New users, first $10 wager only. Must register with eligible promo code. Bet amount of quality wager returned only if wager is settled as a loss. Maximum bet credit $1,250. Must be used within 14 days of receipt. Tier credits and reward credits will be added to account within seven days after qualifying wager settles. See Caesars.com slash promos for full terms. Void where prohibited. Know when to stop before you start. Gambling problem? Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Colorado, Wyoming, and Kansas, affiliated with Kansas Crossing Casino, call 1-800-522-4700. Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Iowa, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Louisiana, call 1-877-770-STOP. Licensed through Horseshoe Bossier City in Harrah's, New Orleans. Michigan, call 1-800-270-7117. Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, affiliated with Harris, Philadelphia. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2537. Or, West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. What do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite, but don't feel like going to the store? Or you want something exciting and new, but it'd be great to stay in the night? DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever, however you want. With DoorDash, you're not just getting things you love, but supporting the community you love too. For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to $20 in value. And $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code Hayward. That's 50% off up to $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Hayward. Don't forget, that's code Hayward for 50% off up to $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Talk to me about uh, the almost the tradition set by Ben Roethlisberger and the fact that you got to almost walk in his shoes being a first round quarterback. You see guys like Terry Bradshaw, you see guys like Ben Roethlisberger. How does it feel to not only, you know, be the next quarterback, but um, you got to, you know, walk in their shoes. You got to be the guy who delivers a Super Bowl here uh, because those guys have had so much success. Yeah, I mean, it, it was good that, you know, at Pitt, I kind of had a standard set by Dan, you know, Dan Marino. And then at, at, at the Steelers here, you know, we have Ben and Terry Bradshaw that, you know, they set the standard. So I've had, you know, greats in, in at the college level to follow and greats at the at the pro level to follow. Um, so I think, you know, the standard is just winning championships, really. You know, guys have their different ways of doing it. Um, you know, I don't know what Ben's yeah. routine was for games. Like, I have my own routine for games, but – it doesn't matter how it gets done as long as it gets done. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's the goal. That's the standard that, that was set here by the greats before me. So that's all I care about. You know, all I care about is winning games and winning championships. So um, I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to do that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, to be a Steeler and, and, and chase those guys and, um, you know, have guys like you to help me out and show me the way of, you know, how to do it. Um, you know, how to, you know, maybe not overdo it too. Like when to chill out, like you said, and, and not, you know, take some time and, be able to reset and, and, you know, be, have a, have a clear head. Um, Cause you know, it's definitely, a, it's a long road, long season. Um, but you know, all I care about is winning. So I'm, I'm excited to keep, you know, chasing that. Well, dude, you got to think you went from a college season and then playing the bowl game, then training nonstop to the playoff. I mean, to the um, season, man, you didn't have any time off. I, I feel bad for those college guys they don't really get a break till after their first year, man. Like that is a long season. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like you said, it's two years, man. That cause during your senior year, you're like, man, I gotta, I gotta ball out. Cause I want to go as high as possible. So you, every week you're just landing on the line, man. And you're trying to win and you're less like, listen, I got to keep going. And then like you said, Susan season's over, boom, training, like you're right to the, right to the facility that you're going to train at and you're getting ready to, you know, chase your dream and, um, but I mean, it hit Wednesday last week of me sitting here doing nothing, and I just wasn't myself, man. Amy's like, you got to get back to training. Like, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I think that's probably <laughs> that's probably it. So I feel, you know, I'm back training, you know, yesterday and just getting lightly back into it, but not overdoing it. But I feel, you know, feel good. Kenny, what was your welcome to the NFL moment your rookie season? 
my welcome to the NFL moment. Um, probably that hit, um, got that beast of a D lineman for uh, the Jets. Uh, we were going in. I threw a I threw a pass, man. He called me pretty good. Uh, that's why everyone's like, oh, he got up laughing. Mm. Like I was talking, I was I was pretty much laughing at how hard I got hit. If that made in a, in a sick way, <laughs> like, me, me and that group, me and, me and uh, uh, Quentin, Quentin Williams, we were going back, you know, back and forth all game. And I was like, all right, man, you got me on that one. Like I'm gonna have to get you back here sooner or later. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was fun. It was like that that was probably it, man. That was a big dude that hit me. Uh, popped up, but yeah, it was. I got hit pretty hard on that one. Yeah, we're gonna try to stay away from those hits, buddy. Um, yeah, I yeah, agree. I'm that, gonna... going forward. We're not gonna have any more of those. <laughs> <laughs> that's on you and the offensive line. We're gonna, we're gonna stay away from those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talk about your relationship with uh, Coach T and uh, um, Matt Canada. Yeah, I'll go Coach T first. Um, you know, he, he's just such a genuine guy, man. Like, what you see is what you get from him, and he's the same every day, which, you know, as a player, I can appreciate that. Um, you know, I just know what I'm going to get. Like, he's just he, – he's consistently so wired and locked in. I don't know how – he. it's like – I don't know how it's even humanly possible. Like, five or six in the morning when we get in there, the guy is just ready to go, man. Like, he, he is wired in. He loves, he loves the game. He loves his job. He loves the guys on the team. Um, you know, really kind of took me under his wing, I'd say, early, in the early part of the season. I'm just kind of getting a routine. Like, I taught him through my routine. He would add some things, like, in the quarterback meeting, like, hey, if you could, you know, take a look at this earlier in your week and you kind of get a good feel for what, what they're mm-hmm. like in the, in, the, in the crucial moments and those big third downs and those fourth downs when, you know, guys kind of show their identity of what kind of defense they are. Are they a man team? Are they a zone team? Um, so in the preparation standpoint, because he's a defensive guy, I, I loved kind of picking his brain and he kind of caught on to that, that I was kind of really big into preparation and, and, and having a good idea of what I'm going to get, you know, from an opponent standpoint. Um, so we, we gelled really well together in that aspect. And, you know, it, our relationship continued to grow as the season went. I was playing. Um, we had some failures early on. Um, and he always kept my head high, man. He always kept me pushing forward. And then we had those success, at, you know, had the success at the back end of the season. You know, I think it really stemmed from having those failures and learning from mistakes. And he was kind of, you know, showing me the way as we as we went. So I got nothing but love for Coach T, man. That, that's my guy. I'm gonna, I, you know, I go to war for him every day. Um, you know, and then Coach Canada, I knew, you know, Coach Canada recruited me back at Pitt. So I've known Coach Canada for a long time and since about 2015. Um, so we have a great relationship. And, you know, as you know, if you're, as if you're the guy, you spend a lot more time with the OC. So early on, I didn't have as much time. And then when I became, you know, the starter, um, you know, we spent a lot of time together and he picks my brain on what I like and, you know, how I like it. And throughout the game, you know, you know, asking me to rank plays and, you know, see um, just, you know, likes to see the game from the quarterback's, you know, point of view and, you know, keeps things different. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we really caught stride after that, after that bye week, man. And we, we figured out, you know, what it's going to take for us to win and what that recipe looks like. Um, so we could, we continue to grow as a team and, grow as an offense you know but we just need to take that jump in, in the year two we need more explosive plays and you know he's doing a great job of trying to figure out you know what we need to do to get those and um you know put up put up some more points so i'm, I'm excited to you know continue to work with him this offseason yeah what was your was your relationship that much different from college to pros with him yeah, it definitely changed because he left for LSU about like two weeks before I got to Pitt. So I never got to play for him. He just recruited oh, me. Wow. So I just had the recruiting, wow. you know, recruiting relationship. I never actually got to play for him. Um, but the new OC that came mm-hmm. in kind of kept his system. So I did have some recall of the formations and some stuff that the new OC that was at Pitt at the time when I came in, he kind of kept that. So that was that was good to have. I think that really helped me out early on with the learning curve. Hmm. Okay, switching gears a little bit, um, you know, as as we're watching these playoffs right now, uh, is there a QB you really model yourself after? Um, I wouldn't say there's a there's a single one. I think that I've taken a lot of things from different mm-hmm. guys as I watch tape too. I mean, I, I I love watching Joe. I watched Joe back when I was in college, you know. So when I when he was having that big year with Jamar Chase. I was sitting down with Coach Whipple and Jordan, and we were watching LSU tape, like, hey, this is what we're going to do next year. And it was kind of cool to have that almost identical season that they had together. Um, you know, that was something that we were chasing. Mm. So I watched his college tape a lot. And now that he's in the pros, man, 
Um, you know, we're in the same agency, so we talk once in a while. You know, I have nothing but respect for Joe and, and what he's done early on in his career. Uh, you know, Josh Allen, I love watching Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and their off-platform stuff, kind of how they how they extend plays. Um, something that I think I improved on in the back half of the season, something that I can continue to improve on. You know, just using my athleticism, extending and getting guys open downfield. You watch how those guys can pretty much make throws from any platform, either going right or left. Um, I think that that's kind of a really impressive part of their game that I like. So, um, you know, I think just being able to watch football, man, just it's always good to watch football, whether you're just casually watching it, which as players, I don't know how many players really casually watch it. You're always looking for stuff as if you're watching tape. Um, but I still I still like just to watch it all the time. And just there's always things that you can learn. Um, always things that you could pick up. So, I, you know, I like watching. You know, I'm continuing to watch all the playoff games and, you know, see what I can, you know, learn from. Yeah, you uh, you bring up all those great quarterbacks. And I got asked, I was doing some stuff out for NFL Network. You know, they're asking who's going to dethrone Pat Mahomes. And, you know, I'm they bring up, you know, Josh Allen. They bring up Joe Burrow. And I'm just like, Kenny Pickett. And I'm like, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to come a time where you're going to unseat the dudes. And um, I'm looking forward to that. But what is it going to take to to dethrone those guys? You know, what's it going to take to be known as the, you know, best quarterback in our game? Yeah, I think yeah, that's a that's a great question. I think everyone just focuses, which rightfully so. I mean, the, listen, the quarterback's the, you know, the most important position on the field. If that guy's not playing well and you guys, you know, you don't have a shot to, to win. But I think you look at, you know, they got a lot of great guys around them, and we have a lot of great guys around me. And I think that, you, you know, it, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It's not I'm not going to walk in there with these guys. We're going to have this, you know, continuity as if we're Mahomes or Allen and, and Burrow, who have been at these places for, you know, a long time now, which, you know, they, they, they've got that rapport with guys, and they're just kind of, you know, have you, they know exactly where everyone's going to be. And, you know, so you watch these guys play. They play with confidence. The receivers play with confidence. Um, they got that rapport that, you know, they just know where their guys are going to be. And that's what we're going to continue to work to get to, um, you know, and I know, I know that we're going to get there, but you know, Rome was a built in a day and it's going to take some time. It's going to take some, some work from everybody. And I know that everyone's willing to do it. Um, but, you know, we'll be able to match those offenses and, and go to toe to toe with anybody here. So I'm excited to, you know, get to that point, but it's going to take a lot of work. Okay. I got to ask one question offbeat before we go in the playoffs or anything. Um, why are you so bad at categories? That's not true. I beat you that day in categories. <laughs> For everyone that's listening, every, every time I come down to the locker room, man, after practice and stuff, th these guys are playing categories, and I had to hop in a couple of times. I was pretty bad the first time. The second time, I thought I won. I don't know how you were counting, how you were adding it up. TJ, TJ was all right. Gunner is the worst. Um, I forget who else was playing with us, but DJ, Cam, DJ's Cam probably wins. the worst. DJ's probably the worst. Cam wins every time. Somehow, Cam wins every single time. So I don't know. We may, we might need a new scorekeeper it's, or something. It's the he only plays letters. games you can win. He only it's plays games you can win, bro. <laughs> it's the double letters, yeah, yeah. It's the triple letters. You got to get good at that. One thing I want to ask you: you guys are locker mates, I believe, right? Can he give us a best Cam story locker mate? Oh, oh, dude, his chairs, his chairs <laughs> always in my way. Or it's either his chair or Connor's chair. So it's like us three in a corner and he's got Excuse two me, lockers Connor. and me. And yeah. And like, there's always a, just something in my locker. And I come in the morning, I'm like, God, like every single time I'm always like throwing a chair out of my way, <laughs> you know, in the morning. <laughs> like, just, every day, like, I'm like, how does this guy have this much stuff? And then by the end of the day, there's like more stuff in there. Like people just keep, must keep shipping you stuff or something. But the pile of stuff that you got, dude, in that locker, it's like it's probably from twelve years of a career, literally. Uh, so like it's just twelve yeah. years of stuff that are stacked in his locker. I'm like, I don't know how a guy can have this much stuff, but um, that's probably the funniest story, man. There's just the, between him and Connor, man. There's always something in my in my locker for sure. Every single day, I can count on. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I wouldn't even say I have the worst one. There's a uh, uh, Terrell Edmonds. We'll have to get him on because like. Rail can't even get into his locker. Like, <laughs> there's literally like a boombox. There's like a portrait, and it's just sitting in his locker. It never moves. Uh, but yeah, I definitely got to clean up my locker. I have a problem with that. A portrait of what? Like himself or his family? Himself. Like himself. I think someone painted it for him. Or no, it was, it's it's like a blown up picture. That's what it is, and it's like yeah. in a nice frame. But he's had it since rookie. Yeah, it never leaves his locker. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's the best time of the year. The football playoffs are upon us. Basketball and hockey are in full swing, and nothing beats seeing your favorite team live. Make up for lost time and go enjoy a game. Vivid Seats, the official ticketing partner of ESPN, is offering you $10 off your first $100 ticket purchase with code CAM. That's code C-A-M. Download the app or visit vividseats.com today. Vivid Seats, life happens live. Okay, so let's let, let's dive into the playoffs just a little bit. Um, did you watch the Bucks versus uh, Cowboys last night? I did. I did. Yeah. Um, do you think this is the end of Tom Brady? Um, you know, it's been a hell of a career so far, and but what do you what do you think is going to happen going forward? Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you, I, he just. He's the goat, man. You just never know. Like it's, it's obviously it's in in his court. You know, it's it's whatever he feels. If he's like, if if he feels like he's ready to walk away and it's time, then he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna. I mean, I, I don't think he's gonna until he does it for like a year or two. Then I know he's definitely out. I just think that you know he's <laughs> he, he's taking care of his body so well, man. He he obviously knows the game so well that um, he he could play for you know however long he wants to. You know, I would never doubt that guy. So I'm I'm curious to see. Um, you know, how that plays out for him. Um, you know, that was one of the kind of eye-opening moments of my career was when we played against the Bucks, And, you know, I was like, man, I'm going head-to-head with Tom Brady. You know, I wasn't, you know, that was kind of a welcome to the NFL moment as well. Um, so nothing but respect for that guy, obviously. Yeah. Did you get a chance to talk to him when we played? I didn't, man. I didn't. I had the concussion in the third quarter. Oh, um, they don't oh let you yeah. Back out. Right. Oh. Yeah, so they don't let you back out there. <laughs> That would have been nice, man, to finish that one out and get the win and, and see Tom Brady after it would have been pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, um, Trevor Lawrence, you watched the Jag- – you I, you had to see the Jags versus Chargers game, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. You see four TDs, four INTs as a quarterback. How do you lead a comeback like that? Down 27-0. Yeah, they- Right, there's no 28 point plays. Like that's like the cliche saying when you're down, kind of. So you just gotta, you got to you got to chip away at it, and um, it just shows his mental toughness, man. It's not that's not easy to do. You don't see, and that's why you don't see it happen. You know, you know all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, guys come back when they're having these tough starts. Um, but you know, as a quarterback, if you can kind of you know put that behind you, almost like it was a prior game, or as if it didn't even happen, and you know, kind of snap back mm-hmm. into it, and you get you get that first completion, man, of, of a series, and you just get into a rhythm. Um, you kind of forget everything that happened. So a um, ton of respect for Trevor. you kind of known him throughout my college career and now, you know, both in the NFL, um, you know, spent some time to get at the Manning camp, you know, in college. But, you know, he's obviously such a talented guy that, you know, when the, if the game's still in reach, you're kind of, you know, you know that that guy can can lead him back to it. And, you know, and he did it. And, you know, nothing re- but respect for him. And, you know, excited to see him play again next week. Mm, mm, good stuff. All right, we got to go to AFC North. We got to talk about uh, Tyler Huntley as quarterback with the dive fumble. Um, you're a guy who definitely goes for those those QB sneaks. Um, and if you look at that game, they went for the QB sneak, but they went for the, the dive over top. Uh, how would you have approached the, that play? Yeah, just personally, I never, you know, unless it's, the, unless it's fourth down, there's no, there's, this is the last play. I think that's the only time when you should really kind of reach the ball over the top, um, especially kind of where they were at. Mm. I don't think they were on the one. I think they were outside the one yard line. So that's that's also a long mm. way to reach. And you, I mean, you're a defensive lineman. You see that ball out there. You're punching at it as soon as you you know you see, you have a chance. Um, so you know, yeah. personally, I like to I like to I catch the ball out of the snap, and I kind of like to read the front. I like to read where guys are slanting. You know, if I feel like they're pinching the a gaps hard. I'll kind of, you know, weave to the B gap and I'll try to find that soft void, you know, in, in the front if I can. Or, um, or if, you know, one of your offensive linemen get, gets a good beat on the ball and gets a good drive, um, you kind of, you know, go behind him and, and push him into the end zone. And you also got guys behind you that are going to push you. So I never feel the need to jump over the top just because of the risk of losing the ball. Um, and knowing that, you know, I got guys behind me that could help push, you know, Najee saved me one time against the Ravens, you know, kind of pushing me forward for a first down that's <laughs> in that two minute drill. So um, that's kind of how I approach it. Um, I never like to reach the ball over for that reason. Um, obviously he's trying to make a play. He's trying to win. Um, so everyone has their own approach, but you know, that's just mine. 
Yeah. Cam, yeah. Cam, can I actually ask you something? Can we agree on something here? And Kenny might disagree here. Can we – we need to outlaw that play where the QB sneaks it and then a guy comes up behind and pushes him, right? Yeah. That, that's the old Reggie Bush, uh, Matt Liner play. That used to be a penalty, and now it's not yes. a penalty anymore. Yes. Yeah, now I, now we got like three other guys. I think it was, happened in the uh, Giants game as well. Uh, you watch it – what was it? Um, I think – versus the Vikings, and you watch Hawkinson catch the ball, then you see an old lineman come out of nowhere just to push him forward. It's like, damn, I'm not just tackling him. I got to tackle two other dudes behind him. <laughs> when he's getting a full sprint ahead, too, and then yes. he's basically running into the back of somebody. So it's yeah. the, the force is going to land forward any, every time. And we don't like, mention these guys are literally getting tackled. Like, not like Najee is literally tackling Kenny to get the I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kenny, but that is a that's unfair. It's unfair for the defense. I'm not going to say anything. I, 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 you know, I'm pretty biased. But <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to another rookie from your class, uh, Brock Purdy. What do you think about his success down with uh, the 49ers? Yeah, man, it's it's impressive, and I think they have a really you know good thing going. You know, in San Francisco, you know, offensively with you know the the coach and, and, and the weapons they have around him. And Brock's just doing a great job of distributing the ball. And I don't think he's getting a lot of respect for what he's doing. And I'm not too sure why, um, you know, the guy's got to go out there and make plays and he's throwing for 303 touchdowns in a, in a playoff game. I mean, I don't care what system you're in. That's, a, that's impressive. So give, give the guy credit when it's due. Um, you know, he's doing a great mm-hmm. job of leading him down the field. He's not trying to do too much, but at the same time you see him extend plays and, um, he keeps his eyes down the field. He 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 gives, gives guys time to get open. Um, I think they got weapons, you know, in the backfield, you know, on the perimeter at tight end. Um, they got a great fullback that they kind of utilize. So I really like watching their offense and, and what they do. And I think there's a lot of things that you know we can continue to kind of learn from around the league and see what other guys are doing, um, you know, and, and just steal some things. And there's guys that you know they have that I feel like we could put some of our guys in the similar spots and do some things and those are great offseason talks you could have when you watch other teams so those are some you know some good things that we could take into the offseason as I'm watching him and watching their system um, but nothing mm-hmm. but respect and you know, I've, I've known Brock you know throughout the college level um, so a lot of respect for him and happy for him yeah that's awesome um, you know you bring up watching film um, and this is our last question um, but when you watch film, are you looking at particular players, teams, uh, or concepts? Because um, that's how I watch film. I watch film by, you know, down the distances, um, you know, different alignments, different stunts, different, um, you know, uh, players, you name it. Uh, but I always was curious about, like, for a quarterback, what's what's your approach during this offseason? During the offseason or during, like, a work week? During the off season, off season, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go through. I watch every every pass that I had. Um, I watch every game again, mm-hmm. and just kind of see like, okay, what did I do well? What do I need to work on? And kind of get the basis of, of what my training is going to look like. And then I would say I'll get into mm-hmm. you know what works for you know what 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 concepts were we really good at? What were we not so good at? Was it because of um, you know what the defense did, or was it because of what we did? Was it something that we can improve on? Um, or is it just something that, you know, doesn't click with us? Or is if I'm not seeing it well, I need to fix something um, that, you know, that I'm doing. Um, I like to watch all the, you know, the incompletions, all the the, the interceptions and kind of run through that and, and see what happened. Was it a, a tip pass? Was it the receiver fall down? Or was it I missed the read? And that's why, you know, it was a pick. So you can kind of put put those in two categories and, and get down to, you know, your, your bad decisions and what you need to improve on. Um, and then you always have to look at the positives too. You can't, you know, dwell on the negatives and like I said, and see what you did well and what you, what we need, what we can do more of. Um, so in the off season, that's what I'm definitely going to get into. And just, you know, from a physical standpoint, I want to address what I need to improve on and, and how I'm going to get better to help our team. Well, it seems like you're going to be improving next year, <laughs> to say the least. Um, the you know, I, I think it, you know, it is the plan, but, you know, you got a good head on your shoulders and, you know, you like the – you got a worker's mentality, uh, and that always helps at the quarterback position. Um, and, you know, I just want to say thank you for coming on. You know, it's been a blast going through all the different topics we went through. Um, Kenny, I got a, I got dinner for you next time. Um, you know, after one of your workout sessions, I'll take you out. 
Uh, but where I are you pre- taking them, Cam? Where are you taking them? When I was up there, you took me to go get Wagyu beef. So I think Kenny deserves Ooh. Wagyu beef. Well, I could, yeah. I could, I could take him and go get some, uh, some steak. Um, yeah. You like yeah. sushi? You like sushi? I'll take you there. Umi. Oh yeah, yeah. We're going to oh. Umi. We're going oh, to he Umi. He knows about that too. He wow. knows about Umi. Man, I that's, guess he's been there. He's been there a while, so Kenny he knows about it. That, yeah. that's our Smart guy. guy. Smart guy. Hey, Kenny, real quick, give me a Super Bowl prediction before you get out of here. Super Bowl prediction. Um, yeah. I think I think San Fran Buffalo. Mm. Okay, San Fran Buffalo. Cam Cam, you were what? Dallas and Kansas City, I think it was. Dallas, Kansas City. You got yeah. lucky last night. All, all teams are still alive. So. <laughs> still alive. You're good. You're still in it. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right, Kenny. Well, I want to say thank you again for coming on. Uh, Hayden as, as well. Thank you so much. But uh, you know, I know you got a session to get to, so uh, appreciate you taking part in not just football podcast and uh thank you so much to all of our fans and uh thank you for listening and subscribing and we'll see you next time